So this video is designed to give you a general introduction to the overall user interface for Mapipedia. So once you've um, got your account set up and you've validated it and you've purchased your tags from Sarah's tag and you've attached them to the um, animals and you're able to log into your account, once they've been activated, you should start getting data and you should see something similar to this. Now, there are a few extra features such as geofences and points of interest that have already been added, but I'll talk through those in other videos. So the main things to notice are these sort of colored squares, which represent the locations or the tags or the animals. And if you hover over them, you can get some contextual information. So you've got a couple of IDs there at the top, which come from the Ceres tag itself. You've got the latest data, which shows you when the most recent data was received from that tag. There's a location accuracy, which is to do with how uh, the quality of the GPS signal. There's an activity field. All that information comes from the tag, but there's other fields like the sex, the breed, the date of birth that um, you know are part of the master data, which needs to be added by the user. And if you have any issues with that, uh, reach out. But I've got another video that talks through how to add Mapipedia um, master data. You can change the layer, so you can uh, click on here and you can look at the satellite view and you can zoom right in and you know see trees and and um, you know buildings and um, you know roads, other points of interest or, or other land features that might be useful when looking at the context of your animal movements. You can also click on this show path option. So if I move this slider around, you can see that these um, you can see how the animals have been moving. And notice how they're very straight lines and the reason for that is because we're only receiving data every four to six hours and so these straight lines are basically drawn between each um, bit of data that we receive so in reality of course the animals aren't moving in these perfectly straight lines but this is the best approximation that we can make based on the data that we've received but it does mean you might see some odd things you might see a, a straight line pass across a dam or go through a fence where there's no gate uh, but really it's just um, connecting those uh, those two points from the snapshots that we've received. You can also press play on this slider and you can change how long it takes to uh, to do an animation. So if you want it to go through really quickly, you can you know play the whole thing in two seconds or you can you know make it go much slower if you want to. You can also select all the uh, tags down here. So notice there's there's 12 tags in total. And, um, and I've selected all 12 of them. If I uh, deselect them, then the, the number of selected tags is zero. You can also manually turn on and off the selection for different tags by clicking on them. So uh, over here on the top right, there's this option to refresh the data. So if you click on it, it will refresh the data from the Mapipedia servers straight away. Uh, and if you leave it on, then every 600 seconds or every 10 minutes, it will automatically refresh this data. Now, if this slider is at a certain point uh, in the middle of the, uh, the the range, then it won't move and these tags won't move. But if you've actually moved it to the very right hand side of the most recent data, then when new data comes through, this slider will automatically go to the latest point and these, these points will actually move on the map. Now, over here on the right, there's also some information about the tag data health, which you can click on by clicking on this first tab. Now you can find out more information by clicking on this eye icon, but um, I'll talk through most of it now here anyway. So what this is telling us is that we've got 12 tags, which matches this number up here. And it's saying that um, out of those 12 tags, 11 of them have received data within the last three hours and one of them within the last six hours. And we typically expect the data to arrive between the four and six hour range. Sometimes it does take longer. Sometimes the signal doesn't get picked up by the satellites, but it's generally pretty good. You'll, you'll usually see uh, a lot of green and, and some orange. And the reason why uh, knowing how long it is since you've received the data is important is it's just a good general check to see uh, how, if the data feed is healthy and that you're getting data from your tags. But also if you want to make decisions based on this data, it's good to know how fresh it is. So for example, if there's a, an animal that's been isolated from the herd, um, if that data turns out to be you know, 12 hours old, then maybe in reality, the animal's not isolated at all. It's, it's, it's kept up with the herd, um, but the data we're looking at is really old. Or if the data is quite fresh, if you hover over that sort of that red, it would be a, a red or a gray tag and if you hover over that um, if it was quite fresh data uh, especially in comparison to other tags on the map 
uh, and it was still isolated, then you've got more confidence that it really might be an isolated animal and you might actually want to go and do something about it. If the data is, say, 12 hours old, you can just sort of slide this back 12 hours and see if the animal was with the herd at that time. Uh, down here, we've also got um, a table um, which will list up to 100 animals. And, um, and this is sorted in order where the data from the tags that's the oldest is at the top. So we can see this orange one, which was um, you know received more than three hours ago is at the top. And the most recent tag is down the bottom, in this case, 1708 on the 24th of April, which also matches this date and time uh, up here when the slide has moved all the way to the right. And that is the, uh, the overall um, introduction. Or actually, you can zoom. So if you've got lots of tags in different areas, you can zoom out and, uh, and see all the tags at once. So in this case, we've got some in Queensland and some in New South Wales. But you can also zoom to a lot of these other like geofences, points of interest, tag routes. And I'll, I've got some tutorials that will talk through those uh, a little bit later. Um, but it's just a way to sort of easily navigate to different areas. And you can download data as well. So you can download um, CSV data. So if you want to download it for all the tags, or if you just want to download it for a couple of selected tags. So if I select some tags here, we can see I've selected four tags. Uh, they're here, I can select them there. And then if we, um, if we download this data, you do need to agree to this condition. So you can't just give this data to anyone. It can only be used for internal purposes. And this is a condition that Ceres Tag uh, enforces, not Mappypedia. So this applies to all software providers. Um, or you can pass it on to third party organisations such as emergency services, but you can't pass it on to other third party institutions, including financial institutions, insurance companies, banks, that kind of stuff. If you want to do that, you need to get in contact with Ceres Tag. Um, so click OK. And then so what we're so we're expecting four tags to get downloaded. And if we click on here, we can see the information for those four tags, including the master data, uh, which has already been set up for these ones. And that's probably enough for this general introduction. If you want to find out more, uh, look at some of the other tutorials uh, and don't hesitate to get in contact if you have any other questions.